Welcome to the ultimate troubleshooting guide, top 10 reasons why your laser's not cutting through. Today is episode one, speed and power settings. That was great. Why don't you do that intro? What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a builder to make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. And welcome to the first episode of our new series, the ultimate guide to why your laser is not cutting through. And this will be here to help you cut through the chaos, literally. If your laser is misbehaving, we have the fixes that will keep you from throwing it out the window. Each month we'll do a new video and tackle one of the top reasons why your laser might not be cutting through and show you how to fix it step by step. We're starting today with one of the most common issues, speed and power settings. This one can save you a lot of time, money, and frustration. Think of this series as your laser's personal coach. By the end, your projects will be sharper than my puns. <laughs> Promise. Imagine trying to toast a piece of bread with a flamethrower or a flashlight. This is what you're trying to do if you don't have your speed and power settings dialed in. Correct settings are critical. They ensure clean cuts, minimal material waste, and professional quality results. Plus, you won't have to explain why your project looks like it's been through a campfire. I mean, unless you're going for that post-apocalyptic chic vibe. No judgment, all good things, all good things. The main culprit, playing guessing games with your settings. Or maybe you forgot to switch from engraving to cut. Been there and I set that on fire. To avoid this, you need to understand your material and your machine. That's where a material test card comes in. It's simple, effective, and it makes troubleshooting so much easier. We'll show you how easy it is to create a material test card in both light burn and creative space. When using a laser, speed is how quickly the laser head moves across the material measured in units like millimeters per second. While power refers to the strength of the laser beam, usually expressed in the percentage of the machine's maximum output. Speed is like the laser's pace. The slower it goes, the more intense the effect. And think of power as the laser's muscle. The more power you apply, the harder the laser works. Speed and power are inversely related. Increasing one often means decreasing the other and vice versa. We often get asked, how do you know which to change? Well, the faster speeds reduce the amount of time the laser spends on any given area, leading to lighter cuts and engravings. Slower speeds allows the laser to linger, delivering more energy to a specific spot for deeper, or more intense engravings. Higher power delivers energy to the material, enabling deeper cuts or darker engravings. And lower power is gentler, ideal for light engraving or delicate materials. All right, let's talk light burn. This software makes running test cards as easy as burning toast, except without the fire alarms. Inside light burn, we're gonna head up to laser tools, and then we're gonna select material test. Now for a default, it's gonna create a grid of 10 by 10 little squares. Let's take a preview to take a look at what we're gonna build. So here's our default of 10 by 10 squares. All right, we're just gonna close this. We don't need a 10 by 10 grid, we're just working with something general. So we'll just say five by five. Now this column here, this is your vertical, this is your Y axis. This here is your horizontal or your X axis. The next row down is param or parameters. This is what you're trying to measure. The default is speed and power, but they also have interval passes and frequency. I never mess with those. I just use it for speed and power. The next row is min or minimum. This is your minimum speed and your minimum power. So for minimum speed, I'm gonna set ours to like 20 millimeters per second. And for minimum power, I'm gonna leave it at 10%. The next row is max or maximum speed and power. So for my maximum speed, I'm gonna do something like 40. And then for my max power, I know 100% is just gonna blow right through this eighth inch Baltic birch. So I'm gonna bring it down to something like 50. And I'm hoping I find something in the sweet spot between 10% and 50%. The next row is the size of the squares that's created on the grid. So right now the height is five millimeters, it's just under quarter inch. And the width is five millimeters, just under quarter inch. The last row here is Y and X center. Now this is based off of whatever your start from is set to over here on the right. So mine is absolute coordinates. So mine starts in the upper right-hand corner 
So from there, we're looking at 450 millimeters in and 700 millimeters down. And this is gonna be the middle of my bed. Then we have these three little buttons down at the bottom and two little check boxes. Now we can enable and disable the borders and the text. If we disable the text and the border and we check out a preview of this, you'll see that it's just the squares. We'll close it. I'm gonna enable the text and we'll enable the border. So now I had to give it a preview. Now this is looking more like a test cut card. So it's going to score the words on here so I'll know what the settings are. And then it's going to cut out the card. So we'll say close. Now up here for material settings, we'll click this. This is what we're actually scoring, cutting, or engraving. So let's make sure that we have mode set to line. Now, if I set it to fill, this will be great for an engraving test, but we're doing a cut test, so we're gonna leave it at line. Text settings. These are the settings for the words or the text that goes around it, so we'll know what type of percentage or speed we're looking at. So right now it has max and min power at 15. I know it's probably closer to a 20. That will give me a good score line. And 180, that seems about right. And we'll say, okay. And then edit, this is the border settings. This is what will cut out your little card at the end. We'll just say max power 50. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna blast through at 50. And then let's make this 150 also. And 15. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's good. If I don't know, I would just I would just go high, error on the high side. But we'll say okay. Or get the perfect cut settings from this little exercise right here and then come back and cut out the card with the correct settings. All right, so let's do a preview of what we just built. All right, and then we can frame this. And before we go, we just went through all of the settings to set it up manually, but there's a couple of presets up here on the left. So there's a cut test, engrave test, I guess a diode cut test and a diode engrave test. So this will set up your card with some basic parameters. And if we take a preview of this, you know, it sets it up and we'll do a, an engrave test. And if you'll notice when we check this, we come back, the mode is set to fill. All right, so let me set this back to how it was. If I have a great test cut card that I enjoy or that I use all the time or some settings that I use all the time, I can also give this a title and then save this and it'll come up as a preset, user preset. So I actually have a test cut card that I regularly go to. So let's frame this out one more time. We're gonna hit start, let your laser show off its moves. When it's done, we're gonna check out the grid. For Xtool Creative Space users, the process is just as easy. Here we are in Xtool Creative Space. First thing we're gonna do is put an element on the board and we'll use that element to create our material test card. You can really use any shape. You can use a rectangle, a circle, whatever, whatever shape you want really. So we're gonna do a little rectangle, square actually. Oh. There we go, square. And then it's not a perfect square, so we're gonna unlock and make it a perfect square. There we go. And the next thing we're gonna do is go over here and make sure we decide what we're making our material test card. Is it gonna be a score? Is it going to be an engrave? Or is it going to be a cut? Now, the great thing about Xtool Creative Space is it does have material. So you can select a material up here and this will really give you the settings for the perfect settings for that material. In this case, it's 80 and 30. But let's say you didn't have that or you couldn't find your material in the material selection panel here. 
this is what you would do. You would create a material test card. So we're going to ignore the material that has been selected. It was already there. And we're going to go over here and we're going to go back to the left hand column and go to applications, material test array. And here you can see it has already created the material test array because I have cut selected. You'll see cut is in the title cut, cut test X tool P2S. And it defaults to five columns, five rows. Each column is a different power setting. Let's zoom in and Oh, if I zoom in, it's going to be done. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Each column is a different power setting. Each row is a different speed. It's taking uh, the difference between the minimum and the maximum, and it's dividing that by the number of rows or columns. So here by five by five. So let's delete. We're going to do this one more time. I deleted my square and everything. Let's fix that. Unlock 0.3, 0.3, material test array. And you can choose how many columns or rows. So I can increase that to make it seven. And I can increase, increase the rows to make it seven. You can change the min. If I'm doing a cut, I know that 10% power and 10% speed are 10 millimeters per second is not going to cut through. So I really don't need to start it at that point. So let's give me something that I think is going to be more closely aligned to what will actually cut through. So let's do 20 millimeters per second up to 40 millimeters per second. And then for power, we're going to start at 20% power up to 80% power. We'll leave it at five and we'll hit done. And that's great. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can save this test cut card. We actually have test cut cards saved under each machine for different materials. We'll use eighth inch birch a lot. So what I'm going to do is instead of trying to save this whole piece of board, I'm going to create a rectangle and put it all around the test cut card and actually cut that out. So I'm going to list that as cut and I'm going to leave the default 80 and 30. I can also put a little text here that says um, I'm using eighth inch perch. Again, I can look at it and see it's eighth inch perch, but just in case you can always just label it there. And now I think we're ready to cut. You can see each of the different boxes with the different settings and we'll just click process. Once it's ready, position the grid and hit start. The laser will do its thing. And when it's done, you'll have the perfect visual reference for your materials ideal settings. Document those for next time or save your test cart card. It'll save you a ton of effort. All right, we both have our little test cards, and by little, I mean months, a lot littler. I think we should have gone a little bit bigger than five millimeter by five millimeter. It's a little too small. We did our recording separately, can you tell? <laughs> but what we're looking for is where it came through, nice and clean. I have a clean cut. There's very little char on the top or residue on the top. I want very little char or backflash on the back. and. All of our little pieces fell out, but I like to run my finger across the edge of these pieces to make sure I'm not getting an excessive amount of soot or, you know, that black stuff that comes off on your fingers. So, and you could really see that when you look inside the square, you know, some of these down here at the bottom are much darker, have much darker uh, burn marks on the inside. I want something that's nice and golden but yet the square fell through. And that's gonna be your sweet spot where it's nice and brown, but not black. Right? Yeah, you know what, it's a blast through because if you're blasting through like way down here in the bottom right hand side, if you're blasting through, you might be getting a thicker line or a thicker cut too. So you're looking for that, that Goldilocks cut. You'll know it when you see it, it will call out to you. Don't skip the test cut card. It might be tempting. But it's nice to have this reference and you'll know where your perfect speed and power settings are.
It doesn't take a lot of material, as you can see. You can literally <laughs> do it on just a little piece of scrap wood. You know, anything that will let you know where your perfect speed and power is, even if it's a two by three inch square. And you might not always have the luxury of having a piece of material, like a piece of eighth inch birch here, where you could save this. You might have a glass or a tumbler, but we still recommend doing a test cut card even if it's small and tiny. Test card, because it may be engraving. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. I said test cut. A material engrave, a mere, a material test engrave card. An engrave, card. whatever. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> do an engrave version and do yourself a little matrix so that you can actually see what gives you the best engrave settings. Well, something like that for engraving, well, yeah, we'll tell you what your best engrave settings and you'll be able to get those different colors or different shadings if you run a test cut card. So you're not just trying to remove material, but you are trying to have varying shades, then varying settings on your engraved. And I'm thinking about that, which is we're about to use that on next week's project. Yeah. Why they're engraving on some glass and I completely intend to run a material engrave card on the wine glass before we start doing all the other ones. I wanna be able to get the right shades. Maybe I want the words to pop a little bit more than the graphic. I don't know, we'll see. And that is a wrap on episode number one of our brand new series, The Ultimate Guide to Why Your Laser's Not Cutting Through. You can find the ultimate troubleshooting guide with all 20 tips in our store or on our Patreon where you can get exclusive laser tips and tricks. Next month, we're gonna tackle material thickness, so stay tuned. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment about your funniest laser fail. I promise it's probably not worse than any of mine. Till then, a big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. And that is the best way to support this channel. That is a great community over there with a ton of resources. You should probably go check it out.